Wow, I have not seen so much vomit since Frosh Week. Oh, stick with this job. You'll see plenty more where that came from. <laughs> so, I think that maybe you and I need a drink? Yeah, okay. Are you buying? Is that you I'm just, buying, you yeah. You were buying? Okay. <laughs> Careful, Elise. Slippery slope with this guy. She offered. That was so an offer, right? I'm going to get changed. I'll let you know where we're going to go. Yeah, okay. What? Let's look. I was just looking right at her. Mm -hmm. Maybe my love life has been uh, stagnating a little lately. And it's just time I bought a clue. So what does that mean? It means that uh, your man Oz here might just be putting himself back on the market. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Leaf game tonight at Freddy's? Yeah, they play the Penguins? A few days. Okay. Bruins tonight. Ugh, Bruins. What? I'll be crying into my beer by the second mm -hmm. period. No crying. We own them tonight. Yeah, all right. Oz. Hey. Oh, I just got back, but I wanted to surprise you before I started my shift. I, uh, I, I don't, I have so much to tell you. Can I, I'll call you later? Yeah? Okay. Hey, Toby. Hey, Sandy. Timing is everything, right? Not a word. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, directors and management team and guests, I'd like to take this moment to announce that this has been Cooper Weiss Pharmaceuticals' most profitable year ever. So let's all raise a slender glass of bubbly, and I'd like to make this toast to you, to the people without whom none of this would have been possible. Cheers. And while we're at it, let's toast to seven-year-old Amy Kalb who liked running and playing softball and drawing pictures of Sir, horses. this is a private event. And now event. lies in Mount Pleasant Cemetery after being prescribed Cooper Weiss's Janet. You are out of line, sir. All right, can somebody please call secure? <clears throat> How you must feel, Ms. Krista Merker, MVP of production at Cooper Weiss. We'll do everything we can to catch who did this. I have to go check out this other victim. Yeah. So what's the story? Poisoning. As far as we can tell, it's a prank gone wrong. There have been six victims, but so far only one fatality, a big one. Jeffrey Brandt, CEO of Cooper Weiss Pharmaceuticals. Could it be accidental? I'm ordered a talk screening on the whole buffet. It's a shame, too, because the shrimp cocktail looks delicious. But as far as we can tell, it's a focused attack on members of the head table. Suspects? Yeah, there's suspect number one right there. His name is Harold Kalb. He's one of the organizers of this protest group that was picketing the dinner. He made a scene during Brandt's speech. Ten seconds later, the head table were dropping like flies, and Brandt was dead. Okay, well, I'll start talking to anyone who had access to the food. All right. Is Brand's wife gonna make it? Well, her heart rate's erratic, but she'll be stabilized. It's a funny thing, it looks a lot like salmonella, but food poison usually takes a little longer. So what's with the protesters? Two years ago, Cooper Weiss released an anti-rejection drug called Janix. It shot Cooper Weiss to the big leagues, but it's been linked to four deaths. Right, so do we believe these claims? Not our focus. Right now, we sweat this waiter and find out what the hell happened here. I've been telling you all night. I never even touched the food. What about the champagne? It was already on the table. All I did was open the bottle and fill the glasses. So you poured six glasses at the head table, proposed a toast, but you didn't take a sip. This is personal for you, isn't it? We know you lost your daughter. That's why you and your wife started the class action suit. We waited two years for a new kidney. Amy was seven years old, spending 20 hours a week in dialysis. The doctor said everything was supposed to be okay. To make sure that there was no 
Rejection. The doctor prescribed a new wonder drug. Genex. A week later, her immune system shut down. And then the pneumonia hit her. Another day, and she... I can understand why you would want to hurt the people that did this to her. No, I didn't put anything in that champagne. I didn't want to hurt anyone, just to shame them. Well, between us, a few suits spewing their foie gras does have a certain entertainment value. I wanted them to confront what they did, so that what happened to my Amy never has to happen again. Then someone else from your group did this? No! The people in my group are the victims. I didn't poison anyone. I ran the catering staff. They're all long-term employees. There's no connection to Cooper Weiss, no criminal records, and they all travel and work in groups, so they all have alibis for at least two hours before the event. So how about Cal? Well, I think he snuck in when the catering staff was distracted. So he had access to the room and the champagne. What about the other guests? From the reports I've received, there's a bunch of people milling about the head table, but none of them had a problem with the company. Did we get anything from the coroner's office? The lab did Brandt's blood work. They found this in the bottle of champagne. Digitoxin. It's a uh, poison derived from foxglove. It mimics salmonella, but acts a whole lot quicker. So someone was trying to make it look like food poisoning, but witnesses said they saw Cal uncork the bottle at the table. Oh, I got them to check the cork. They said they found a small puncture in the cork, like someone maybe injected the bottle with poison. Why did Brandt die and the others just get sick? Maybe he ingested more? Could he have had a pre-existing condition that made him more vulnerable to the digitoxin? The coroner's still working on his medical records, but otherwise the digitoxin should have landed him in the hospital bed, not the grave. All right, keep looking. Klein still thinks Cobb's our best bet. Yeah, well, I can't confirm that he knew the poison was in the bottle. And, and I get the feeling he was just as surprised as everyone else when people started getting sick. Well, we don't have anyone else with better motive. If he wanted the poison in the head table, why isn't he taking credit for it? I get the feeling he just wanted to be hurt. Don't let your sympathy cloud your judgment. These people have every reason to be upset. They're just regular folks who became victims. Okay, so let's throw the net wider. I'll get Dev to look at the other protesters, see if any of them have a history of violence. I'm glad to be back, but battling heat, exhaustion, viruses, and snakes is not as bad as fixing Dr. Sloppy patient reports. Can you just give me a second? Hey, Oz. You want to go grab a coffee? Hey, uh, I can't. I'm so busy right now. I'm behind on paperwork writers. It's been all over my ass. Oh, I yeah. just thought, you know, since I've been away for a while, yeah. I want to spend some time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, maybe after work? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much. It doesn't work, so. But, uh, this is a writer. Okay, uh, I gotta go. I'll, I'll call you. You sure? All right, send me the results right away. That's why you're my favorite. She's not my favorite. So I dug up Brandt's medical records. There was nothing that could combine with digitoxin to kill him. And we already know the cardiac arrhythmia wasn't triggered by the digitoxin. Anyone else would have stopped there, but I always go that extra mile. Yeah, especially with self-congratulation. So I did another tox screening on Brandt's glass, and guess what they found? Amygdalin. That's a marker for cyanide. Yeah, it was a trace so small that no one would have ever really noticed it, but combined with the digitoxin, it was enough to kill. What about the other glasses? Brant's was the only one that came up positive for cyanide. So whoever put the digitoxin in the champagne also put the cyanide in Brant's glass. They must have wanted it to look like food poisoning. So we're not looking at a case of corporate mischief. Jeffrey Brant was targeted for murder. might change things. Maybe Harold didn't kill Brandt after all. No, what it means is we've been looking at the wrong crime. The old suspect might still apply. Oh, so where do we go from here? Well, knowing we have a specific victim means we start looking for specific motives. Well, I don't know if I found a motive, but uh, I did find someone who had a beef with Brandt. So I was checking the security tapes of a bank down the street to see when Harold entered the hall. I couldn't see Harold, but I did see this. Jeffrey Brandt. Who's he arguing with? Her name's Krista Merker. I talked with her at the scene. She's VP of production. Well, she looks like one very unhappy lady. Jeffrey was the best boss that I ever had. Is there anyone in the office who had a problem with the company? Nobody. Everybody is here because they believe in Cooper Weiss. What we do for people. Well, the protesters see it differently. They don't understand Jeffrey's mission statement. Ethics before profit. What were you two arguing about? 
It was stupid. I found a small discrepancy in our numbers. If a quarter million can be considered small. What was the discrepancy? It was a bookkeeping error. I guess I shouldn't have asked him about it before the dinner. He got mad. He said he needed to focus. Can you be more specific about this bookkeeping error? I can't talk specifics about company business. Even if it could help find your boss's killer? Jeffrey, why you? Why, you? why did it have to be you? Be you. I'm sorry. OK, well, thank you for your time. Please call if you think of anything else. Well, did your superpowers get anything? Yeah, I think she knows a lot more about the books than she's letting on. They were off by a quarter million. Did you see where it went? No, but she was talking to Jeffrey Brand about something to do with it. So whoever took it might have killed Brand to cover their tracks. There's our motive. Hold on. Hey. OK, good. Thanks for getting back to me. Brent's wife is able to talk now. Mrs. Brandt is stable, but heavily sedated, so go easy. OK. Cool. Mrs. Brandt? I'm Sergeant McCluskey. This is Special Agent Logan. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's OK. Why did they do it? Why did they, why did they kill my husband? Well, that's what we'd like to talk to you about. We found cyanide in his system. We believe your husband was murdered. <laughs> Do you know anyone who would want to harm your husband? You know who did it. The protesters. They... My husband was a good man. I know this is difficult. Did your husband have any specific enemies? Valance is in charge of the money. This is on his head. Did he ever talk about missing money from the company? I don't know anything about money. I can't help you. Please leave. OK. Yeah. Michelle, it's me. Uh, one of the guests at the Cooper Weiss party came forward with some camera phone footage of what happened at the head table. Anything interesting? The, the CFO, Thomas Valance, he didn't get sick. In fact, it turns out he didn't drink the champagne at all. OK, we'll check him out. Thanks. Claire thought about Brad talking to someone on the phone. He blamed Valance for something to do with the money. Well, let's see if he's to blame for anything else. I'm surprised the IIB's gotten involved in this. Well, Jeffrey Brandt was an important man. That makes his homicide something we're interested in. Homicide? You're saying he was murdered? Why? By who? Well, we were hoping you could tell us. Well, I don't know. Someone was trying to kill everybody at that table. Not quite. His glass was laced with cyanide. He was specifically targeted. You had a lot to gain from his death. Oh, you're accusing me. We understand you're going to be the new CEO of Cooper Wise. Pending board approval. You two also had an argument about a missing sum of money. That was a discrepancy in the books. It has been made right. A simple accounting error. But there were other differences as well. Look, he was an idealist. I'm a bottom line guy. But the fact is, we needed each other. And you guys had no problems. Look, you can't go on like this. No, listen to me. No, you listen to me. We're done. All right, fine. I'll meet you at the Magnolia. Nothing that couldn't be sorted out peacefully. So you were at the head table, yet you didn't drink the champagne. <sighs> I'm on antibiotics. You can check with Dr. Lang, my assistant, and be happy to give you his number. We'll do that. Look, if you really want to know who killed Jeffrey, why aren't you talking to the people who are howling outside our dinner? The protesters. The protesters. Do you know last week, one of them dumped a bucket of blood on Jeffrey's car as he was leaving the lot? Kalb. The waiter, yeah, Harold Kalb, we know. No, I'm not talking about Harold. I'm talking about his wife, Rebecca. Bounce was lying to us about something. I got him on his phone arguing with someone. I think it might have been Brant. He said that we're done. You know, I've kind of felt like they're on the point of some kind of break. You know, maybe Brant's murder was the next step. I'll have Dev uh, check the phone records. I did throw the blood out of his car. Someone had to get through to him. We have a witness who believes you are capable of a lot more. That wouldn't happen to be Thomas Valance. He's been trying to discredit us for months. He knows our daughter was the victim, that her story will sell newspapers. What story is that? That Gen X has fatal side effects. They knew and they covered it up. It's 
so you must really hate Jeffrey Brandt. His product killed my daughter. That doesn't mean that I want to kill him. Was there anyone else from your group who was out for revenge? Why are you picking on the victims? My husband was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Leave us alone. So I searched for members of Kalb's organization and cross-referenced with a list of threatening letters to the company. One of them stood out among the rest. Uh, it was sent by this guy. Charlie Enzo, 36 years old. He was an early test case for Janix. This guy sent a series of letters that can be described as uh, death threats to the company. He was a member of the Janix class action super dropped out three weeks ago. This was his last known photo. So what, he's dead? Well, there's no obituary, but here's where it gets weird. Apparently, he left his apartment and just disappeared. He was last seen at the hospital for his dialysis treatment. Charlie Enzo, uh, he was in about three weeks ago on the 4th. This is gonna take a while. You wanna grab a coffee? Uh, yeah, I'll walk with you. Yeah. Cool. Can I ask you a question? Sure. And you have to answer me honestly? Depends on the question. You think Oz and I are good for each other, right? Wow, I should have told you to lie. What do you want? Decaf. You want decaf? It just, it kind of feels like he's been avoiding me lately. Okay, look, um, Oz is, uh, he's a sensitive guy. You know, when you suddenly left to follow your dreams, it kind of took the wind out of his sails. I just think he doesn't want to get hurt again. I didn't mean to hurt him. I know. Just when your dream goes sideways, doesn't mean you can come back and expect everything to be like what it was before. What if I told you my dream didn't go sideways? Six weeks away can focus a girl. I just kept reading all of his emails, and I knew I had to come back. You quit. I missed him. Stupid, huh? So what do I do? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is gonna take a little time. You gotta finesse this, a little TLC. I could get him something. Right. Something, something special. It's gotta be good. This is the guy who got you a, a mailbox full of roses, who put you in a hot air balloon, tried to take you into the Caribbean on a whim. Uh, the lease. They played the pens tomorrow night. I yes. could, uh, he'd kill for tickets. Kill for those tickets. Oh, thank you, Tobe. My pleasure. Oh, here we go. Enzo, comma, Charles. Yeah, we do have a pickup address listed. Yeah. Nice. You're never gonna guess where. Cool, thank you. This is where a terminal patient lives? Yeah, I'd like his health care plan. Well, if you get anything, go easy on him, okay? He might be extremely right. vulnerable. Charlie Enzo. Party's over, ladies. We need to talk to you about Jeffrey Brandt's murder. Oh, he's dead? Imagine that. He beat me. You're barking up the wrong tree. I had nothing to do with it. Then allow me to read from a letter that you wrote to the company. Before I die, I'm gonna see Jeffrey Brandt skinned and fed to rabid wolverines. Okay. Maybe I went a bit far with the wolverine thing. But I'm in a different place now. I've grown to accept my fate. Well, they paid you off. Uh, Cooper Wise gave you $250,000. We checked your bank account. You want to tell us otherwise? What do you want me to say? I took money. From Brandt? From the company. I signed a letter saying I dropped out of the suit. You know, I felt bad abandoning the others, but we weren't going to win. What else could I do? Look at me now. You know, I used to run marathons. <laughs> now I can't even run across the street. I do understand your anger. No, you don't. I sunk every penny I had into beating those bastards. For every lawyer I threw at them, they threw two back. But hey, at least I'm going out with the bang, huh? By spending your money on booze and girls? No, not all of it. If you must know, I made an anonymous donation to the anti janix group. Helped them with the legal fees. I gave up. That doesn't mean they have to. So, Enzo's donation checks out. The class action suit received an anonymous $100,000 donation four hours after he took out the money order. It left four days after that. So where'd it go? 
Nobody knows. So maybe it was someone paying to take the fight to the next level. But if the poisoning was a paid hit, then who's our mysterious outsider? Doesn't seem to be Harold Kalb. Whoever it was, they would have had access to the champagne and the glasses before the meal. But with all the people milling about the lobby, anybody in the room could have had opportunity. Well, and they would have had to have the seating plan to know which glass was Brandt's. What about Valance? He hated Brandt. He paid out the quarter million and he didn't drink the bubbly. He had a prescription antibiotics. I double-checked with his dentist. And you've never bent the rules when you're on antibiotics? <laughs> Point taken. But if he were the killer, then don't you think he would have drank the digitoxin to cover his tracks? What in doubt. Follow the money. So, uh, I just have a few new questions. We were actually able to meet up with Charlie Enzo. He's the guy who received the missing $250,000. You guys are good. Even I couldn't figure out where it went. Right. Well, I think you know who paid it to him. Jeffrey, you know Fallon's took the money. We could tell them. Thank you. So, Thomas Valance, he had a lot to gain from Jeffrey's death. I mean, what were they fighting about? After Janix, Jeffrey wanted more transparency in his testing. He planned to introduce testing by an independent body. I take it that's not how Janix was tested? We pay the lab a lot of money. Sometimes they don't want to give us bad news. Well, they don't want to, or they've been forced to stay quiet. Is Valance in charge of product testing? I know your boss preached ethics over profits. I, I know you believe that, too. If Valance had anything to do with Brad's death, we need to know. I decided to look into the Janix product testing after your first visit. It took me four hours to find it. Failed test results, along with a draft of a letter that Jeffrey was going to send to the board to make a case for Valance's dismissal. He was going to fire him. Jeffrey wanted a clean slate before his proposal for independent drug testing was announced. Also, you'll find a funding plan to pay back the victims for their losses. Jeffrey, why did you do it? It shouldn't have happened to you. I think your boss would have been proud. Okay, you are officially my favorite paramedic of all time. Favorite? Wow, what about Toby? Toby, the yeah, name doesn't really ring a bell. <laughs> hey, Oz. Sandy, come meet hey. the partner of the year. Okay, it's not that big a deal. The tickets were free. What tickets? Leafs, Penguins, tonight, front row golds. Do you mind if I paint my face? Is that cool? Um, no. No, it's, it's not. It was nice to see you, and I will see you later. That's, uh, some partner. I know, right? So, how's it going? Uh, I just, um, I wanted to tell you that they are doing construction outside the ambulance bay. That's what you wanted to tell me? Yeah, they made a, a hole, and it's just, it's deep. They made a deep hole. Okay, I will watch out for it. Thank you. That's, that's it. I, I gotta go. All right. Toby Logan. Hey. Just the guy I'm looking for. Right on. Michelle asked me to look into Valance and Brandt meeting right. at the Magnolia. It turns out it was the Magnolia Hotel on Frame Street. When did they meet? Well, that's where it gets messed up. OK, sure, there was phone records to Brandt, but that's not who Valance met there. Security cameras in the lobby picked him up meeting Claire Brandt three times in the last month and heading up to her room. OK, what's he doing with Brandt's wife? Well, exactly. I mean, maybe she's not the devoted wife she claimed to be. Huh. All I know is one poisoned glass, and they have control over the whole company. Right. And Claire and Valance sat on either side of Brandt. You think one of them could have killed him? Maybe both. All I know is that's motive and opportunity. And all we need is evidence. Exactly. You're getting good at this. June 2nd, June 9th, and June 12th. What were you doing at the Hotel Magnolia with Thomas Valance? My husband bought a number of shares of the company in my name, and Thomas asked to meet to discuss some tax ramifications. We know you two are having an affair. Were you working with him? Did you help him kill your husband? No. I didn't kill my husband. 
So who did? Balance? You know, I don't know. It was a confusing time. Okay, Cooper Weiss was doing well, but there were storm clouds on the horizon. My husband was planning something that it didn't make sound business sense. The independent testing. And Thomas was convinced it was too costly and that it would hurt the company, and he asked me to help convince my husband. So then what happened? So he asked to meet at a hotel. Strictly business. But he had charm, and he had swagger, and he had wine, and... <laughs> it was very good wine. But I was so lonely. And I was so angry at Jeffrey for spending so much time at the office. But you know what the worst part of this is? Balance was just using me. <laughs> it's like there was some piece being moved around in some game between him and my husband. And I thought he cared about me. <laughs> How could I have been so blind, huh? Jeffrey never found out about it, but I, um, I promised myself that I would, I'd make it up to him somehow. <laughs> I never had the chance. <laughs> All the more reason to look at Valance for the murder. Because he had an affair? It makes him guilty of bad judgment. Well, he hid the results of the Janice trials. He was at war with Brent. He was sleeping with the guy's wife. How much more do we need? Proof. <laughs> Brought him in here. You did. Look, whoever did this has a sophisticated knowledge of poisons. Balance is a businessman, not a scientist. Yeah, but he works at a company full of scientists. He has access, motive, and opportunity. Stay on him. My relationship with Clara has no relevance here. Things like this happen. You mean like payoffs to your victims? We didn't have to pay anybody. The courts were on our side. What about the money that you paid Charlie Enzo? That came from a slush fund. Look, Enzo was hurting our credibility, and I did what any other person in my position would do. I paid him, and fairly. Some people would call that misappropriation. Did you know that Brandt planned on firing you? Oh, no, that's absurd. My position was completely safe. He wouldn't have he fired me. Fire he me. couldn't, afford, he couldn't to. afford to. Look, you can't hang this on me. I did not kill Jeffrey Brandt. Someone is trying to take this company down, and Jeffrey's murder had to do with that. So who is trying to take this company down, then? We found out last week that someone hacked into our system, was rooting through our files. Specifically, security and R&D. Why don't you ask them? I pulled some strings. I got IP routings to the intrusion into the Cooper Weiss system. Now, they all went through ghost servers in Europe. I'll give you three guesses as to whose IP address came up, okay? How about you just tell us? Right, Rebecca Kalb. It turns out she has a background in IT security. Now, she made intrusions into all departments in the company, but she focused on research and development. Okay, well, I mean, that doesn't necessarily connect her to the poisoning. Well, that's the thing. One of the documents that she accessed actually had physical details of the venue, including the seating chart to the dinner. She has some questions to answer. Hmm. <sighs> you have one new message. Card game's off, buddy. Guess who's seeing the Leafs tonight? Smack dab in the Golds. Nice. Yeah, that Elise is pretty much everything I could want in a partner. No offense, but Toby who? Okay, bye. i tell you right now, if you had let me paint my face, they totally would have won that game. Oh, please. At least we got to see some nice goals. Too bad they were on the wrong net. Yeah. Um, are we not going to your place? Well, um, my place is kind of undergoing a bit of a makeover right now, so... And Toby's not gonna mind? Toby? No, I don't think so. I'm kind of thirsty. There's drinks. Toby has drinks. Just give me one minute. Okay. I'll be I'll be right back. Yeah, one minute, sure. Hey, Toby, listen, don't get mad. But Elise and I are using your place for a couple hours tops and maybe grabbing a couple beers and, and some snacks. Oz, what the hell happened with Sandy? She bought you tickets to the game. What, you bail on her? Wait, what? 
She wanted to make it right with you, so she got you tickets to the game. Okay, this is information that I could have really used yesterday. Oz, you got my beer yet? Okay, I gotta go. What? I gotta go. Bye. You lied to us. Seems you've taken a very active role in the war against Cooper Wise. You hacked your specs to the dinner and you'll plan your husband's little stunt. Yes. I orchestrated Harold's infiltration of the banquet, but poison was never part of the plan. Maybe he did it without your knowledge. He was one of the only people who had access to the champagne and Brand's glass. He'd never do that. Never. You were there inside the restaurant? No. I was outside in the crowd. My wife didn't do anything, and neither did I. We know she opened the door for you. We know she was in the restaurant. What, you think Rebecca did it? No. She just got me in. I got Harold in. But I never poisoned anyone. Neither did he. It's getting very hard to distinguish the truth from the lies here. Look, I'm sure there was a time you were left alone with the champagne, and that's when you did it. No, I never saw the champagne. Well, she wasn't near the champagne. It's like I told you. I came in. I changed into the waiter's outfit. I just wanted to say my piece and get thrown out. Or get arrested. It, it would all be good press. So you lost sight of your wife? For a few seconds. That's all it would take for her to inject the bottle with digitoxin into Cope Brandt's glass with cyanide. No, she didn't poison them. You think my wife would do that knowing that I'd look guilty for it? Well, that's a good question. Why would she want to frame you? She wouldn't. All right, if she wouldn't and you didn't, then who did? I don't know. The bottle was on the table. All I did was open it and fill the glasses. We talk for a second. We have to test the champagne glasses again. What are we looking for? We'll find Valance's prints on Brant's glass. Valance pushed his glass away. Brant picked it up. The poison was meant for Valance. The wrong man was murdered. You were right. There was a partial print in the base of Brant's glass that we thought belonged to the waitstaff, but it was matched to Thomas Valance. The question now is who'd want to kill Valance? Okay, so we're back at the beginning. Maybe not. If you have access to Brent's email account? Yeah, why? Check for anything to do with Jan X testing. Whoever tried to kill Valance knew he was responsible for the deaths. Right, right. Someone Jeffrey Brandt told, someone loyal to him. Someone with a background in chemistry. Yeah, good call. Brandt sent the information to Krista Merker three weeks ago. She told us she didn't learn about it until yesterday. Well, all the details of the Jan X trial are there. Brant and Krista knew that Janix was a killer. And they both knew that Valance hid the results and paid off Enzo. I read Krista, and when she said, why'd you do it, I thought she was innocent. But really, she was just upset that the wrong person had been poisoned. Well, didn't she say that Valance was going to be fired? Why didn't she just wait for Brant to get rid of him? Don't know. I just saw Valance threatening him. Sounds like you've got your killer. Let's go talk to Krista. You knew the truth about Janix for a long time, didn't you? Crystal, we know you didn't want this to happen. We know you didn't want to kill Jeffrey. So what happened? When Jeffrey found out, he was horrified. He didn't tell anyone but me. Said we had to play it smart. Valance is a very powerful man. We needed a solution that his lawyers would never be able to sink. The way he sunk the Janex trials. Those people didn't deserve to die. We did this to them, our product. All because Valens corrupted the test results. So your argument with Jeffrey was about Valens? When Valens found out that he was gonna be fired, he threatened to blame the cover-up on Cooper Weiss instead of himself. It would have ruined the company. So Brent relented. It was blackmail. He had to give in for the good of the company, which 
meant Valance would stay and another Janix could happen in the future. So you felt like you had no choice? One life lost to spare many. Well, the judge will take your story into consideration. I killed my mentor. What's the judge gonna say about that? You're gonna have to come with us, Krista. <sighs> I don't think so. What'd you take? You take cyanide? <gasps> was to solve a crime, and we did. That's a win. Look, Krista thought she was doing the right thing for the victims, for her company, and you know, for the people who'd be hurt in the future. And she killed the man. The law still frowns on that. The world is a better place today than it was yesterday. Is it? I mean, there's, there's two people dead, a man responsible for killing four innocent people walks away. How do we know he's not gonna kill more people? Well, if he does, we'll be there. So that's what we do, we just, we wait for the bodies to pile up. I sent the information to the Department of Health and Welfare. It's in their court now. What are they gonna do? They're just gonna sweep it under the carpet. I don't like it either, but they're our official channels. Thomas Valance and Cooper Weiss are no longer our job. Well, that said, maybe sometimes these things are better handled through unofficial channels. Enjoy the game? Um, not as much as the Pens fans. <laughs> Just treat him well, okay? You got yourself one hell of a guy. That's the thing, um, I was actually gonna give you the same speech. I I should get back to this. Bye. Sandy. Sorry for coming unannounced. Oh, no, I, uh, it's good. I, I wanted to talk to you, too. It's about you and Elise. You know? I mean, not that there's anything to know. Nothing happened. It almost did, but I, uh, I couldn't go through with it. Why not? Because I would have rather been at the Leafs game with somebody else. But I don't get it. I mean, she's, she's beautiful. She's smart. She doesn't have to pretend to like hockey like I do. I mean, what could you possibly not like about her? Yeah, now that you mention it. But, uh, she's not you. Can we try this again? Thank you. 